wanted to talk to Danny Woodhead and Matt Slauson before this week was over about the retirement of Philip Rivers. And uh, really excited to have these guys back on the show. You can hear Danny Woodhead and Matt Slauson, their podcast, Out of Nowhere. You can hear it Monday nights at 6 p.m. on 1090. You can watch their podcast on our YouTube channel. We're all working together now. And so Danny Woodhead and Matt Slauson played with Philip Rivers. Uh, especially the last few years. I mean, the last part of Danny's career, those four years or so in San Diego, they were awesome. And Danny was such a huge part of Phillip's offense. And then Slaw came in late and, and, you know, played and protected Phil in the last year in San Diego, and then actually went with the team up to LA. So here's Danny Woodhead. Here's Matt Slauson back on Kaplan and crew. Fellas, good to see you both, man. How you doing? What's up, Danny? How are you doing good? How are you guys? Uh, we're good, man. Thank you very much. And nice. take take a look at your boy Slaw here. He knows that we wanted to see what was going on in his barn, his studio, his gym. Slaw, <laughs> what do you got? What do you got going on there, dude? Well, this is my swing lab, uh, swing lab slash uh, weight room slash just escape from life, family, kids screaming. Uh, Bro, just, it looks I'm, like you have a stroller over there. It looks like I you have do. a stroller in that bedroom. Like, are yeah. you are you guys going to have another kid? No, no. Well, if we have another kid, then I got some serious questions for my wife because <laughs> it isn't possible anymore on my end. <laughs> Same with me, dude. I know. How many kids you got, Slaw? I got three. How about you, Danny? We have four. Yeah, me too. So when I got to number four, I was like, snip, snip. This thing's over, man. Yeah, you call it quits. Yeah. That's what you're not a like i'm one to preach you know like let's not ever quit like just never quit that's that's kind of something in the house like you're not going to quit uh, we're quitting <laughs> like, like the, that's that's one one uh area where you're allowed to quit well said. So let me get you guys um let me just get your opinion right away and i know browner and grande are going to want to jump in too um I got the calls like, are you shocked Philip Rivers retired? I'm like, not one bit, man. The guy's got nine kids. Guy wants to be a high school football coach. Guy wants to live that small town life. Um, good for him. He's making this decision on his own. By the way, can he still play? Of course. You know, could somebody pay him 20 plus million to play? Absolutely. Could he have gone back to Indy? I would think so. So I'll, I'll throw it to you guys. Danny, you first. Were you surprised at all? Or what's your opening thought about Rivers retiring? I don't know if I was surprised. I mean, obviously he could continue to do it. Like you said, like, I think that's pretty evident. I mean, I, we've seen even late in his career, like some people are like, Oh, but he threw picks. It's like, no, Philip just, he's going to go down swinging. And that's why some of the picks happened, but I'm, I'm not surprised though, because I'm su there's some of me that thought he might've wanted to go, give it one more year, but I am not surprised that he wants to be done. I mean, his, his kids are getting older. He has nine of them. Uh, he, his, his, his main goal is to be the best, you know, husband and, and dad. So like, th it's not shocking. He just wants to spend more time with his family. And I think that's great. I think he's going into a life now. Like uh, I always say this, Hey, when you get on the other side of the NFL, that's when you know how fun life is. The NFL is amazing. Wouldn't take anything away from my 10 years. But man, life just started once you retire. And I, th I think he's probably looking forward to that. Boy, it is good to hear you say that. You know, you could probably really help so many other former NFL players who don't understand what you do, that life is better after, you know, um, because I think, you know, you know, go ahead. Well, I think so many guys get lost afterwards. I, I think the thing is, there's a lot of people that that's their worth, you know, is football. And, if, if you make that your worth, your number one thing in your life, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. Like you can make it super important, like football. Like I always say, I hope people viewed me as someone that was, um, you know, had a passion to play the game and wanted to win and yada, yada, yada. But that's not who I was as a human being. I, I was the, I mean, my faith is my number one. And then, you know, my family football is a third, like, cause that was my job. And I think you're, you're going to see that with Philip, and, but a lot of people, they, they put their whole lives just into that. And then when that's gone, the, the number one thing that makes them go, people get lost and, and it's very hard. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you, your perspective is, is 
so different than so many others. Hey, hey, we're talking to Danny Woodhead and Matt Slauson. You can hear them Monday night on 1090 at 6 o'clock. You can see their show on the Kaplan and Crew YouTube channel, although I think we're going to be changing that pretty soon to the Great Friends Podcast Network channel. And hey, hey, Slaw, what do you think, man? What, what was your first thought when you heard that Rivers retired? You played with him the last couple of years. Yeah, um, you know, I really appreciate Danny uh, stealing all the material to talk about. Uh, <laughs> so Get it out of the I, way. So I guess I can just duck out of here really quick. Uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, to touch quickly on what Danny was, was talking about in retirement, uh, you know, Dan- Danny helped, helped me out tremendously because retirement is not, not easy. It's not an easy transformation, uh, you know, physically, emotionally, um, uh, coming home, being with your wife day in day out day out it's an adjustment for both both sides and because danny was sort of a year ahead of me and everything um getting to uh he he was a sounding board for for me and that was that was really help 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 helpful but back to the philip thing uh honestly i was surprised um surprised and a little bit disappointed um you know, I love Phil. I, I, I think he's incredible players. We all do. Um, what was disappointing to me was, was that it, it was obvious he could still play, but it was, I know both of those org- organizations very well. And I was so happy for, for Phil when he got the opportunity to go play for the Colts. So I was like, yes, he gets to be part of a real organization. As soon as he feels that he's, he's going to want to keep on playing, you know, Tom, Tom Brady style, you know, just, just keep on going as long as he can. Cause it's, it's the first time in a long time he's had an offensive line in front of him. First time in a long time that, that he has an organization doing whatever possible to support the players to win, um, you know, stability at the head, the head coaching position, the coordinator position. Um, so, it was like I, I was being selfish for him. Uh, and, and now that he, now that he has kind of called it quits, I've kind of had to reevaluate my, my emotions about it. Uh, and we actually talked about this on our pod this week. Uh, the only reason, you know, Dan, Danny brought it up. The only reason that makes sense is because he wants to be the best husband and father possible. And, and that, that I commend him for, because that's something, you know, we all strive to be, or we, we all should strive to be every day. Yeah. We're talking to Danny Woodhead and Matt Slauson. You hear their radio show now on 1090 on Monday nights at 6 to 7 p.m. And you can hear their podcast throughout the week. Out of Nowhere is the name of the podcast. Danny, let me ask you this. And then Browner and Alex, jump in here. Let me ask you this question. Do you remember, uh, Alex can probably share the screen right now and show you this. Tell me if you remember this. It's late December 2015. The Chargers, nobody knows if they're coming or going. Miami game. And, and as I recall, you scored four touchdowns in that game. Yep. This is video I shot after the game. I was on the field. I was working for CBS that day. And Rivers is walking off the field and into the tunnel. And the crowd is going nuts because nobody knows if this is the last game. Danny, while we're watching this video, and keep an eye on this because you guys will love this, what, what do you remember from that, from that day? You know, I, I remember, obviously, it was one of, the, one of the better games I played with the, the four touchdowns. I mean, I, I, I do remember that. Um, but I remember there in emotions. Um, and you, you could just feel it. You, you could feel it throughout the, I mean, throughout the day. And it, it was, it was we, we did feel like it might have been the last, the last game ever. Um, that was a it was a awesome experience because even me who was that was only in year th- I think that was my third year there and I had I made a lot of memories there in three years and I couldn't imagine what you know E Dub and 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 Phil and all those other guys E Dub as in Weddle and and even Hardwick down there um, he wasn't playing at the time but like he was emotional because you also did see how even though there were times, you know, when we weren't that great, we we weren't getting a a great turnout uh, fans wise. And just the talk of, um, you know, moving, 
there, there was a lot of emotion and you could tell the city of San Diego loved us and we loved them back. Um, even though there were some weird times because the stadium, new stadium wasn't built, yada, yada, yada. Um, but there was a lot of emotion. I remember a lot of guys, um, I mean, it, it, I don't want to say taking it hard, but it, you look at Phil and, and Weddle, like they had been there their whole careers and it was a long time. And um, it, was a, it was a pretty cool day though. I will say, even though we thought it was the end and it didn't end up being, it was still pretty cool to be a part of it. And in my eyes, it still feels like that was the last, you know, the last charger game there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me and Browner talked about it. Cause we were actually at the final charger home game against the chiefs the next year. And it was polar opposite Terrible. of that video. <laughs> it was dead. The chiefs yeah. won. It was just like, it was just no emotion. But when it go going back to Phil all week, and I don't know if you guys have done this, but NFL films released, best of mic'd up philip rivers and that's obviously yeah. what the national media loves to talk about how he never curses but he's still an all-time trash talker question for both of you guys is when you're in that huddle and when you're when the other guys are across the line how is it when philip is going after these guys is it as clean cut as everybody says i think it is but like how is it to see it in action philip just going after <laughs> everybody every game <laughs> uh, do you want me to answer first law I'll, I'll, I'll give a little something. He, uh, it's, it's funny. Um, and, and you're just like, so me, I was egging it on. I loved it. <laughs> I'm sure there were some people that would be like, no, you need a, you need to stop. And it's like, no, you don't need to stop. This is, this is actual gold. Like this is an amazing thing, what he is doing. And I, uh, I gotta be honest, him and I got in fights on the field. So like I've been in, that type of stuff. Maybe not the trash talking, but, uh, he's, he's the ultimate competitor. Like it doesn't matter what it is. It could be golf. It could have been, uh, slaw and I would play with, uh, Kellen and Kellen Clemens, the backup quarterback and Phil. Like I remember during training camp, we'd take our clubs out and I bought a, a small little golf hole and we put it out on the field turf. Cause then you could kind of putt. And we'd have like team games that we'd play. And I mean, he's getting after it like it was a, a, a playoff game. And that's kind of how I am too. So like, I, I really, I enjoyed everything about Philip Rivers, the comp the competitor, great friend, amazing friend. But like, I don't feel like there's a lot of people that take everything as serious as I do when it comes to a competition and he's someone that does and I <laughs> respect it. I love the chatter. I love, I love all of it. Slaw, you played with, with Phillip rivers, you know, last year in San Diego, Alex and John were talking about that last game against Kansas city. Cause I actually thought the week before against the Raiders was the last home game for the chargers, but it was the following week against Kansas city. And by that time people had given up on the team and they were exhausted about the stadium thing, but you actually got to go with Phil from San Diego that last year up to LA, you knew about all of his commuting and he wasn't moving and leaving. I mean, what, what was it like for you playing with him for two years? Oh, um, you know, <laughs> those, those last, last couple of years, uh, with, with Phil, obviously, uh, the, the emotions are around San Diego and then the move and, and, you know, Phil being so entrenched in San Diego there with his family and his kids and not, not wanting to leave, not, not wanting to bail. Uh, it, it, it was such a, such a drama filled, you know, end end of that, uh, I guess it was 2016 season, uh, leading up really all the way through 2017. Um, uh, you know, just kind of communicating with, with Phil, uh, you really got to see where his priorities lied, and that was and that was in the city of San, San Diego there with his with his wife wife and his kids and and the incredible fan fan, fan base that had supported him his his whole entire entire career. Uh, you know, you alluded to the last last couple games. It, it it was really bizarre that that feeling going out there on the field and trying to perform for an almost empty state stadium. And we all know we're about to leave. And uh, we kind of have this feeling LA is not going to accept us 
very well, well, well there. So it was just kind of a really weird, weird, bizarre year. But every time you step on the step on the field with Phil, every time you're in the huddle with with Phil, he just has a way of just breathing confidence into every player around him. I think when we uh, what a lot of people don't understand, and I think what you two guys get, and I think what Phillips' advantage in retiring is he knows what he wants to do next. Because mm-hmm. let me let's let's be really honest about what the average person doesn't understand about a professional athlete. Like you're a child prodigy, and I think people don't understand this because you're doing this from eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like a lot of kids start playing football at a very young age, and when they people see how great you are. They, they try to manifest that talent. And so technically, you're a child prodigy. You don't do anything but that. It's just celebrated so openly people don't see it as that way. And so when you play a sport from 12 to 36, in Phillip's case, late 30s, in Tom Brady's case, early 40s, like what's next doesn't really feel like a thing because you've done nothing else. And so, Danny, when you talk about – uh, being more comfortable when you retired, I think a lot of guys struggle with that because they don't know what's next because they've done nothing else. But and you're they, saying that you, Rivers, but you're saying Rivers won't have that problem because he knows what he right. wants to do. Okay, gotcha. Right, I think Rivers is going to be okay because he knows what he wants to do next. Yeah, and so I think that's why he retired and he's okay with it. That's why he announced his retirement on the day of the inauguration because he didn't want anybody to bother him about it because he wants to go to the next thing. You know, it's funny that you say that you think that he's going to be okay because he knows what he wants to do next. I think people are not okay with what he wants to do next. People are surprised that he wants to go coach high school football in Alabama. It's, you know, it's funny. I remember him when we talked about this was years ago. Um, and he always said, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to be a head ball coach, a head head ball coach at high school level. And, and he knew what he wanted to do me. I didn't want to be a coach. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to get as good as I could at golf. I wanted to do this, that, and the other. And, um, that's made, that does make a huge difference. I, I think it's that, that makes a lot of sense. Cause a lot of people you've done it your whole life. Like slaw was talking about it the other day. I played, I don't know, 26 years of football, some somewhere in that range. And it's like, that's most of my life. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, what so like, do you remember for both of you guys? What do you remember before football? Like, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I don't remember anything because yeah, I like, started at like third grade, I third or fourth grade. I have, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> because like, what, what do we remember younger than no football was always in my life in some capacity. And even before that, my dad was also a, he was a high school football coach. So like I was around it anyways, like football was, always a part of my life. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's something that's really key is knowing what to do. But I think also just my, my parents always preached to me like, Hey, this is not everything in your life. And so I I will say I had a head start in that knowing like, Hey, when you're done, there's still some, there's other things that go on. This is not who you are. Yeah. You're a man. and, 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 Slaw knows this, and and some people know this. Phil's faith is huge, so that's not who he is as a Philip Rivers, a football player. He's he's Philip Rivers, um, you know. His faith is number one, and then he's Philip Rivers, a, a a friend, a dad, a a husband, and and I think that's really important because the thing is with the NFL and with the fame that we we get, deservedly or undeservedly, um, it's different because you're always known. And it's, if you can be okay with not being known, that's the biggest thing. And and, and I think that's the biggest thing right there. That's really interesting. Hey, we got to go. We're we're running out of time. Unfortunately, we could spend all day with you guys and we'll look forward to listening to you on Monday night. Real quick slaw who you take in AFC and NFC title games. Who you got? Uh, it, I, I can't bet against against the Packers here. Um, Aaron, Aaron is just playing out of his mind. Devonte Adams is, is superstar. Um, you know, it's, it's tough because throughout my career, it sort of got ingrained in me to never bet against Tom, mm-hmm. uh, just cause he always finds a way, but, but in this capacity being up, up in, uh, up in green, green Bay, 
I'm not worried about Tom playing in the cold. I'm worrying about the rest of Tampa's team playing in the cold. They mm-hmm. aren't they aren't going to be able to adjust adjust to that. I I don't think. Uh, as far as the a- AFC goes, uh, to me, say Mahomes is playing. Let's say Mahomes is playing. If he's playing, I think I think it's the Chiefs. I do. I think with their experience, uh, you know, they've had obviously much more recent experience going all the way. Um, you know, it's in Can- Kansas City. So uh, I think Buffalo's playing awesome, but I don't think they have enough to come into Ar- Arrowhead and and beat them. Danny, you got a quickie for us? What do you think? Yeah, AFC, I, I, uh, I think uh, it's hard to go against Tom. I'm going Bucks. Me too. And, and I'm even if Mahomes is healthy, I'm going Bills. Me too. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think I think I think the Bills' offense is so good, and not a lot of people talk about it, which is fair because they're in Buffalo. Like, who wants to talk about Buffalo um, when when the sexy pick is Patrick Mahomes? But I think it'll be a good game in, in both games. I know I got both wrote. I mean, look at me, look at me. I'm all about sexy. Yeah. Look at uh, 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 slaw. I really want to like come hang out with you for a weekend and do some work in that place. I feel like, like I could become more of a man if I came there and, you know, picked up some tools and helped you build that place. man. Kaplan, I can guarantee one thing. Yeah. You will will probably have a bunch of sweat in there. I mean, look (laughs) at that. It just, it looks like there's tons of sweat on that floor. Oh yeah. And, And I don't clean anything. Hey, any one of you guys are welcome. <laughs> any one of you guys are welcome out here anytime. Welcome <laughs> staff infection. <laughs> hey, Danny and Matt, we'll see you guys on Monday on 1090, and we'll be watching the podcast on our YouTube channel that we're all working together on now. Pleasure to be with you guys, and thanks for the thoughts on Rivers today. Have a great weekend. Hey, have right, a good thanks, one, guys. guys.